I'll do one more with you. You'll try the rest on your own, but we will go over them. Okay? So remember, this is recording. All right. We're going to start with number one. I'm going to turn this light on. Maybe that'll be a little better. There we go. So we've got MK is congruent to OK, and that's given. And I'm going to label them one, two, and three because my handwriting gets a little messy so you can see which goes with which, okay? MK goes with OK. All right. Is there anything else I can prove with that? If it is congruent, I move on to the next given. If it's not, I have to put something after it, okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, I've got KJ bisects angle M. K-O by given. Okay, so K-J bisects M-K-O. That means these two angles must be congruent. So step three, I need to prove something with this given. So I'm going to say angle M-K-J is congruent to angle O-K-J. By what, guys? Who knows? Definition. Definition of an angle bisector, yeah. I just put bisector. Um, yes. Okay. So, what else do I have? I only have an angle and a side right now. Do I have any other sides or angles that I can say from the picture? Because I ran out of given. JK is congruent to JK by what? There you go. Okay. So then, do I have enough information to prove that the triangles are congruent? Okay, so let's say triangle MKJ is congruent to what? Make sure that congruency statement is right. What goes with M? O. O, then? Okay, and then finally, and it's congruent by what? Side, angle, side. Okay, so I want to prove that it bisects. So what do we know about the definition of a bisector? It makes two things congruent, right? So it makes, so I can say these two angles are congruent right here by CPCTC. So I'm going to say angle MJK is congruent to angle OJK by CPCTC. And then I can say KJ bisects angle MJO by definition of an angle bisector. Is that necessary? Yes, because that's what I'm trying to prove. So that has to be my last step. What's that last part, say? KJ bisects MJO by definition of an angle bisector. Okay, I'm going to give you a second to try, no, I'm going to do number two, and then I'll let you try number three, okay? All right, so first thing I do is write down my first given, right? AD is parallel to BC, given. Okay, so what does that mean? AD parallel to BC. Um, we don't have a triangle here. I'm going to assume that when this was printed off, it did not copy the line. So please draw this in. This is a typo. A to C. Okay. If two lines are par parallel, that means what? What two... Um, Alternate interior angles is what this is going to be. Okay, so we can say step number two, angle CAD is congruent to angle <coughs> BCD by alternate interior angles, AIA. Once we have that, we can move on to my next given because I've proven something's congruent. Step three, AD is congruent to BC. AD is congruent to BC. Do I see anything else from the picture? 
Do another side or angle from the picture. AC is congruent to AC by reflectance. Oops, this is given. Sorry, number three is given. Four is reflexive property of congruence. I'm just going to shorten it to reflexive property. Okay, so now I have the triangles are congruent by what? Um, side, angle side? Yeah, because you have a side. You have the angle and the side. So triangle A. B, C is congruent to triangle C, D, A. Okay, <coughs> therefore, number six, A, B is congruent to C, D by? Yes. Okay, guys, go ahead and try number three. Try number three on your own. Just going to give you one more minute. Okay, what did you guys put down first? CD is perpendicular to AB. We remember what perpendicular means, right? Okay, if it's perpendicular, this is the given. That must mean we have some 90 degrees. CD is perpendicular to AB. So that means that angle CDB and angle CDA are 90 degrees by definition of perpendicular. Therefore, angle CDB is congruent, and yes, that step is necessary, to angle CDA by definition of right angles. Okay, we've proven something is congruent. So we can go ahead and move on to my next given. D is the midpoint. of AB given. So that must mean those two sides are congruent. AD is congruent to BD by definition of a midpoint. And is there anything else from the picture I can say is congruent? CD is congruent to CD by? Reflexive property. So are the triangles congruent now? By what? Triangle ADC is congruent to triangle BDC by? Side, angle, side. Therefore, CA is congruent to CB by what, guys? 
<coughs> CPCTC. All right. So my students who were gone and missed their quiz from last week, you've seen enough of this, and you can watch the rest of the video if you need to. So Kenny, Angelo, Rodolfo, Alexis, please go to Mr. Rehorse's room as soon as you have this written down. Okay. Please take your vocab with you. You do not need a calculator or anything, but you will need your vocab at least. Okay. He's in room 714. If he's not there, he's next door. All right, guys, I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do one more for you, and then I'm going to have you try the last two on your own. Okay? I'm going to turn it over. Josh, poke him and tell him to go for his You got it? Are you listening? You got to go take your quiz with Mr. Green. Okay. All right, let's flip it over. Okay. We're going to start, guys, with step one, the given. Angle one is congruent to angle two. That's one, given. Okay? Number two, we can move right on, right? Because it says something's congruent. Angle three is congruent to angle four, given. What else do I see there? Is there anything from the picture? Because I only have two angles. I need to a side. OM is congruent to OM by reflexive. Good, guys. Reflexive property. Okay. Do I have the triangles are congruent now? Okay, step four. Triangle. Um, J, M, O is congruent to triangle KMO, good, by angle, angle, side, right? Okay, so I want to use midpoint. So what is the step that I usually use after midpoint, but I'm going to use it in reverse? JM is congruent to M, uh, KM. JM is congruent to KM by... C, P, C, T, C. Okay. And M is a midpoint of J, K by definition of midpoint. All right. I am going to do number five with you because I haven't showed you one like this before. And then I'm going to let you do number six on your own. <coughs> First thing we always write down is what, guys? Given. Given. Angle one is congruent to angle two. Given. Two. Angle three is congruent to angle four. Given. What comes next? Okay, By what? Good. KM is congruent to KM by reflexive property. Okay. So, step four, how are they congruent? Triangle JKM is congruent to, how would I say it? LKM by what? Angle, side angle, good. Okay, what does isosceles mean? Okay, so which two sides am I going to say are congruent? JK and LK, and I can say that by what? What's my reason? Yes. So, step six, what I'm trying to prove Triangle JKL is isosceles by definition of isosceles. Definition of isosceles. Yep. 
All right, guys, I'm going to give you a few minutes to try number six, and then we will go over the answer to it, but I want you to try one more on your own to see if you're getting the right answer, okay? How come you didn't have to do all this extra stuff on Friday? So you think we should just stop at CCCCC like we did? Yeah. So that's what we did before. This is, these are extra steps. These are why you need CCCCC in the first place. Okay? If it says just prove two things are congruent, right, then you just stop. But this is kind of thinking backwards of some of the um, postulates and theorems and definitions that we have. So it is an extra thinking step. You're right. Okay, so we don't split a trial and we don't come in an hour Simone, if you I'm show sorry. up on time, you I'll listen look. to this, you need to turn around and do your stuff. Plus, it's recording everything you're saying. So why don't you turn around, do number six, and then we'll go over the answers. Can you edit this Shh, Nope. <laughs> yes, they do, and it might help you grade as well. Can you do it? One more minute, guys. Try to get as far along as you can to be able to check your answer. All right, guys. What's the first thing you have down? Angle P is congruent to angle S by what? And then we mark it on our paper. P is congruent to S. Number two. O is the midpoint of PS. And what does that mean? If O is the middle of PS, that means these two are what? Congruent. So we can say PO is congruent to SO by definition of per, uh, midpoint. Okay, you can use vertical angles now. You can say POQ angle. P, O, Q, right here, is congruent to angle S, O, R by vertical angle. Now, are those triangles congruent? Yeah. By what? So, Q, P, O is congruent to triangle. R, R, S, O, vertical angles, or angle P, O, Q is congruent to angle S, O, R, angle, side, angle. Okay, now we want to use O as the midpoint, so the first thing we have to start with 
is proving the two sides would be congruent. So, no, there's no, there's nothing that's parallel. So we have to say R O is congruent to Q O by C P C T C. Therefore, O is the midpoint of QR by definition of a midpoint. Okay, guys, you have the rest of the hour to work on your homework. You have the rest of the hour to work on your homework. Please put your calculators away if you haven't already, since you won't need them to do this.